I'm scared this video might get banned and let me tell you why. Today's tutorial is about how you can create your own AI agent to automate your favorite apps. So think of Twitter, Reddit, or LinkedIn. I'm gonna teach you how you can extract the news, how you can engage with content and even reach out to users. If you're a creator looking for content ideas, an investor trying to spot trends, or a brand trying to connect with micro-influencers, this tutorial is for you. We're gonna be using Anchor Browser, which is an automation platform for AI agents. I'm gonna teach you the fundamentals of managing user sessions and how you can perform actions on the platform X. For each of the use cases, I'm gonna tell you exactly how long they take, how much they cost, and what you can do about it. Also, I'm gonna add different timestamps for each of the use cases, so you can just go back to the video whenever you need it. And finally, I'm gonna add all the code that you're gonna see on my GitHub. It's publicly available, so you can just go to it as well. So let's get started. Quickly about me, I'm Vlad. I'm the founder of Elements Agents. We've built over 50 AI agents for companies in healthcare, real estate, insurance, but also SEO or marketing agencies. I'm building AI agents in public every week. So I have lots of resources available if you want to figure out how to build your own. I have a simulator that can help you figure out how much you would save by building an AI agent. There's a link to audit your workflow in the description of this video. I usually charge $300 an hour, but I usually keep a couple of slots every week for you. All right, so now let's go back to the tutorial. So before we dive into the code, why do we need a platform like Anchor Browser? So if you spent a little bit of time already around web scraping or automation of your accounts where you need to authenticate, you probably realize that oftentimes they get blocked. And the reason for that is these platforms don't want to have bots and rightfully so. However, the reality is that there are a myriad of platforms today that help you circumvent that. And it ends up being a bit of an arms race between anti-bot products like Cloudflare and platforms such as Browserless, Zenrose, or Firecrawl that allow you to engage on your behalf. All of these platforms work in a similar fashion. They're allowing you to register user sessions. They're getting around CAPTCHA solvers. And usually they do that by registering the tokens of your authentication sessions or by introducing proxy settings and advanced algorithms to get around them and solve them. All of these platforms have their strengths or drawbacks. I'm gonna tell you why I love Anchor Browser. Firecrawl is very powerful if you're trying to answer specific questions about the content of a page because it's gonna convert the content into a markdown. Zenrose allows you to run complex JavaScript instructions. So if your bot needs to extract information by clicking on specific buttons, Zenrose is quite good at that. Browserless is quite an advanced and more recent version that allows you to handle sessions with multi-AI agents so they can perform quite complex tasks. Finally, Anchor Browser handles sessions for you. You can query the pages and perform tasks. The reason I like Anchor Browser is because it kind of includes all of the functionalities and it's 100% pay per use, whereas Browserless is 200 bucks a month. Zenrose is over 300 bucks a month if you wanna have something that is good enough to get around Cloudflare solvers and then Firecrawl can really perform tasks. It's only allowing you to like query data. So I would say that Anchor Browser is like the best all round solution in comparison to these ones. Now I'm gonna show you how it works and how you can get started. So now we are on Anchor Browser's website. And the very first step that we need to do is to create a user session that we can reuse later on. So like I said, I'm gonna go over three different use cases on X where the first use case is gonna be scraping content from X and converting it into a structured output that you can then reuse later on in an AI agent using Core AI, for instance. The second use case is gonna be about how you can actually engage with content. So whether it is a like, a repost, or a comment of a post. And then finally, the third use case is gonna be about how you can automatically reach out with personalized DMs to anyone on X. This logic can be applied to any other platform, but just for the sake of this tutorial, I'm gonna focus on X. So now I'm gonna go over the Anchor website to show you how to get started. All right, so like I said, now we need to create a user session. Here's the documentation from Anchor Browser on how to do that. So step one is we need to go on the Anchor Playground to authenticate, and I'm gonna show you how to do that. And then without closing that session, we're basically gonna define and give a name to that session so that every time we go on X, X is gonna think that we're still logged in and then we're gonna be able to perform the different actions. Then we need to terminate the session. The last step is we have defined a name to that user session ID. We can then reuse that session to which we gave a name forever. Let me just show you how it works on the playground. So the playground is here, so under app.anchor browser, you're gonna get your API key and you have the browser playground. We need to log into X for the first time. And so we need to pick the example AI form filling. And then here in the AI form filling, we're gonna have to specify 
this here the login page for obvious reasons i'm gonna blur this data basically now it's gonna start so like i said like now the browser is gonna try to get into x so it's going on the login page and it's gonna enter my email username and password what's super powerful here is that it's gonna ask me for a confirmation code which i will go and get from my email that i will then enter here to then eventually just get into twitter and then register that session so now it's entering my email entering the username password now it's asking for the confirmation code awesome okay so now you can see it's gonna type into the search bar which was the last action that we asked you can click on the search bar so what you need to do now is take this session add it here and we're gonna register the session cool so status success now we created a name called x tutorial we're logged into x and we're going to be able to reuse that that session later on and i'm going to show you how this is always a little bit stressful i'm going to give you like the prompt that i've been using that you can just populate but the best way to do that is to keep a tab readily available with your email where you're going to get the confirmation codes so that you can enter it quick so that's just like a bit of a tricky situation now i showed you a code where i basically copied and pasted the session id and I didn't invent this out of thin air, so I'm just gonna show you where this comes from. All of it is coming from this API reference where you can create your own session, you can create a new profile. So basically what you need to do is call this API profile endpoint where you're gonna add your API key, you're gonna give it like a description and then a name. So in my case, I went to API profile and I gave it a name, right? This is my profile description. So you can actually do it here directly and just give it a name. All you need to do is get the session ID that I, that I copied and pasted here. And then once you've created that profile, then you can start your browser. This is another API endpoint where you're just gonna pass your API and key, obviously. And then here on the profile, you're gonna enter your name. This is gonna launch a new session. So this is what I'm gonna be showing you with the first use case now, where we're gonna be scraping content from Twitter and then structuring it into a JSON uh, format. So let's get into the first use case now. All right, so this first use case, we're gonna do two things. We're gonna extract information from Twitter and then we're gonna structure it. There are two parts to the script. So the first one is where we're gonna create a session, scrape Twitter. And then the second step is where we're gonna actually parse the tweets with LLMs. We're just gonna add an LLM chain to structure the output from Anchor Browser and structure it into a set of objects. So here's a tweet object where we have the author, the time, the content, and the key metrics, and then we have the tweet list. The final output is gonna look like this. So this is what is actually the raw response being extracted from Anchor Browser. And then we are getting this LLM output with the list of tweet objects. The way it works is I'm actually gonna go on this community uh, to then extract the 10 most recent posts on the page. And then I'm gonna ask Anchor Browser, so the task it's gonna perform is to extract the post with the number of likes, views, and comments, and where they were published. If there are like sub posts or threads, I'm asking also to consolidate that into one post. So <clears throat> just to show you briefly how this community looks like. So let's just go over here. So this is the community build in public, and we have the top latest media. So I'm basically gonna ask my agent to click on top and then get the most the 10 most recent posts. So we have Mark, we have Jolix Tom, Eric Javid with their content. So yeah, let's, let's try it. Okay, so in the meantime, I just wanna show you quickly how much credit I have so that we can see how much we're gonna pay for each session. So we're at 162. So now it's running, it's taking, it's been running for 20 seconds. I'm gonna pause the video and just start it again once we're done. All right, cool. So in 52 seconds, it returned the, the, the information. So we have a post by Eric David. Eric David, are you proud of your SaaS? Are you proud of your SaaS? Yes, I tried to roast it with the number of views, the number of likes. It was published 12 hours ago. And then it's, it's turning this output into a structured list of tweet objects. So we have this one that went viral. I remember seeing it. Olga, Jay, Bass, and so on, right? So you have all this information. I think here, basically, the key in the script is to make sure that you structure your output and that you're being quite explicit with your agent on what it should do. And then basically we have this prompt with a super low temperature using Grok Cloud. 
with lemma 3.1 to then convert all the information that we get into a structured output. If you are to integrate this into uh, your crew AI and you want to create a custom tool that scrapes to then generate scripts or to then basically reuse that content and post it on Reddit or LinkedIn or anything like that. This is quite a powerful automation that you that has like lots of use cases for. Now that we're done with the first use case, let's see how much it costs us. Okay, so it costs us six cents. So imagine you could do this like across different communities and perform this action, which would, you know, in five minutes extract probably all the relevant information that you need every day. The second use case is very much the same. If you want to comment and post, you're just going to give a set of actions to your agent. Just because of the credits that I have left, I'm just going to skip it. But it works exactly the same. If you have any questions, you can obviously reach out. But I think it's important that I show you how the third use case works, which is basically going to send DMs to people automatically. All right, so this is the script for the last use case. We basically have one long action. The reason why it's a little bit trickier is because is because we need to specify on which URL the agent should run specific actions. To figure that out, you basically have to go through it yourself manually and then collect the URLs. Those are the different URLs. And I want the agent to send, hello, this is Vlad from the future. Uh, I'm going to get this message from my bot and it's going to be sent to my private. So <clears throat> I can show you here in my messages. I already got a message here. Hello, this is Anchor. This was from the test that I run. So like every specific action happens on a specific URL. So you have messages when you open the message box, then you have Compose where you're gonna be looking up for that person, Ziegler, the, which is my account made in 2015. Terrible name, but that's just the way it is. Click on the first search results, click the next button, Compose, type, hello, this is Vlad from the future and click send button. So now it's proceeding to compo to message composition. Now it's composing the message, sending the message, and it's and it actually send the message, or at least that's what it says. Let's go and verify that. Perfect, hello, this is Vlad from the future. Cool, now you have your first bot that can send automated messages. Let's see how much this cost us. 156, seven cents. So actually not that pricey. Now the, it might be a little bit pricey, but if it's just to initiate conversations, that might be a good starting point. Is it really 139? I know. Okay, that's what I, that's what I thought. So you know, 20 to 30 cents per message. This is not very viable. So the reason it's so expensive is because we are using pro proxy settings. So if you are to use yours, it will probably be a lot cheaper. But more importantly, every time you run and perform an AI web task via Anchor Browser, it's gonna cost you money. So if you know exactly the sequence of events and the specific JavaScript instructions, then maybe it might be a lot cheaper and you would only be using Anchor Browser for managing your sessions and getting around CAPTCHAs and using their proxies. So it kind of depends really on your, your use case, but yeah, prices can get a little bit high. But uh, yeah, that's how it works. All right, so over this video, we learn how we can create user sessions scrape content, engage with users on platforms like Twitter. The beauty of Anchor Browser is that you can very easily replicate that process across any other platform. You create your session and then you perform different tasks on these platforms. There are so many applications to these use cases, whether you want to come up with content ideas, whether you want to repurpose content from Twitter into Reddit, or if you want to engage with your audience, reach out to micro-influencers to sell them your services. All of this would be possible. Like I said, all the code is going to be available on my GitHub. I'm going to add the link to my GitHub repo in the de description. If you want to integrate this into your workflow, you can also book a session with me. I'd be happy to show you how. Otherwise, see you next week for another tutorial. Ciao.